let's talk about war related investments. Mm -hmm. There's a few of them. Um, what does this mean? Like, this is like military companies that's a military uh, supply companies. Yeah. Or, or have exposure to defense or war. This is a hedge. If, if a war breaks out, these are some of the ones that you could potentially invest in. All right. So there's a few of them. You want to go through them? Uh, one of them is GD. Yeah. General Dynamics is one of, I would say, that is best of breed. So if I'm looking at it right now, it's at $238. Um, I like this stock a lot. So since 2008, I mean, it was at 41 bucks in 2009. Great return. I do like General Dynamics a lot if we go into a war or if we stay in this environment where things are tested between uh, the Israeli conflict, uh, China and Taiwan and um, Ukraine and Russia. Well, you say when we go into war, uh, what, what do you mean by that? I mean, well, America, I think in, since inception has only been out of war 17 years. So we always are fighting some conflict or have some kind of allies that are in a conflict. Um, and it does have an impact on our economy as a result. So um, not that we're like in a direct war, if you will, but the Russia-Ukraine conflict, which I won't go into too much, is having an impact on my our economy. And we're putting way too much money into Ukraine. I always say it like, why are we deploying billions of dollars? We have homeless people in every major city that are going through an economic crisis that they've never seen since 2008. Um, so if, if capital is leaving, even though we may not have boots on the ground, it is still technically our war. So if that's the case, right? I mean, that's a pretty interesting statistic. We're always finding somebody. You talked about that company. What, what are your thoughts on a company like Raytheon, who's pretty much the mission is to fund and create missiles create technology around defense systems what are your thoughts of having something like that in a portfolio long term when we talked about companies that we should be looking at defense right is is one of those things if we're, if we're talking yep. about we're in these times so what's your thoughts around like a company like that um i like raytheon at 57 bucks or if i can get it at 65 um stable company you can argue there are some companies that give better returns but it's one of those ones you don't have to think about general dynamics for going that same uh, portfolio. And then, of course, Exxon, if war increases, the profitability of oil-based companies are going to go up as well. Mm -hmm. So I like those three as a, a parent. Uh, Raytheon, General Dynamics, Exxon is like a military or war-based hedge portfolio. So that's like its own ETF you just created? Pretty much, yeah. We're going to call it the defense ETF. So you got some oil stocks, you got some machinery stocks, and you got some defense system stocks inside of it. Yeah. I mean, because the thing is, like, no matter what happens in the economy, your job as an investor and a person that is battling a recession independently, you have to know how to make money regardless of what market that you're in. The thing that makes Luca real dope, Kyrie real dope, KD real dope, LeBron, they can get a bucket in any scenario. Um, so if you're not able to do so with your portfolio and your business, you're going to be in a tough spot. Um, I will add Chevron to that, ticker CVX to their portfolio as well. And that would be the four that I would look at to round out my defense portfolio if um, the political climate is favorable of more wars. All right. So we got CVX, we got GD, uh, we got XOM, and w w would you add Chevron? Chevron. Uh, would yeah, you I'll add put right there. There. All right. So let's yeah, get absolutely. RTX aside of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because uh, they keep saying, oh, two tech, two index, what else? I'm like, I get you, people want diversity. Sometimes diversity is overrated. But if we're going to be in like a warlike scenario, and often wars happen when money is not flowing as readily. People are fighting for less resources. Like when money was flowing and everything was fine, we didn't have the formation of bricks moving this fast and all of these wars and talks of Taiwan being taken over by China. Like we had a lot less threats. When the money is not flowing, that is going to lead to um, a lot more warlike scenarios that we have to face. Yeah, and you got another company inside of there because war looks different in these times and days. Uh, Fortinet, which is more of a cyber security type mm -hmm. situation. So talk about that, having that as part of, the, I guess, if we're creating this, this war-based ETF, having the cybersecurity component as well. You have to have one because at some point, a lot of the attacks are going to be digital and 
internet based and not just boots on the ground. Um, even when the thing happened in Caesars, my first thought was, man, what if an enemy combatant got a hold of seven or eight of our biggest companies and drained them or held them up for ransom to get billions of dollars out of them? You have to be protected and look at every side of the, of the game to see where if this does break out, how you can protect yourself and be able to make money for you and your family. Okay, got you. And for those like, that are taking notes, because I know a lot of people write down their notes for it, and the ticker is FTNT. FTNT. Yeah. I would keep that on the watch list. It's not one that I will put as number one for all of you who like to do review videos, but I will put it on a watch list. <laughs> review how much money you have. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Shawty tired of me today. <laughs> review your account. <laughs> account review. Yes. Yeah. I mean, also too, like House Speaker got kicked out. Yeah. The Treasury bond market we I've been talking about is one of the worst crashes in history since March 2020. T bonds with a maturity of 10 years or more have fallen 46. percent Um, this bond route is worse than the one we in 1981 where the yields almost hit 16 percent small bankruptcies have been rising we are in a different environment yeah it's a like the bond market is supposed to be a beacon of safety and it's performing like the 2000 dot-com crash that's troubling if you've been in a 60 40 portfolio the last five years tough crypto fell t-bonds fell airbnb got litigated out the market podcasts have felt like but you have to find a way to be profitable and get a bucket in every market. This is why practice is really important if you're going to trade. That's why knowing where to get in on crypto at the right price is key. Prices presume overall. Um, and I know sometimes it may feel like we're coming off to be salacious. It's not that, but like there's signs of the times that are happening in real time that the economy is turning and we don't see light at the end of the tunnel yet. Leadership bad. Interest rates are high. The Fed looks scared when they talk. You want to know a real like sign to know if things are going well? Look at the federal chairman, reserve chairman, and see how confident he is when he's speaking or if he's telling you through his body language that things are going to be tough for a little bit of time to come. If the Fed chair is concerned, you, you have to get prepared. I'm not saying this to scare anybody. If I made you money, please put yes in chat. But when I'm looking at this as an investor, usually we have three or four of these things happen at a time. We now have them all happening and succession at one time happening and everyone's acting like everything's okay and it's not so there's a tweet out there saying that congress has been buying defense stocks mm -hmm. what to make of that they're playing the playing within the rules of the game um shout out to queen pelosi the greatest trader of all traders um if they're buying defense stocks actively it tells you that a war probably could break out well you has that been verified or is it just a twitter rumor you can go to Senate Stock Watch. I have no affiliation. Um, you can go to Senate Stock Watch, Quiver Quant. Uh, you can go there and see what they're actively buying. It's true. It's true. Sure. Hypothetically, like whenever these bills are about to get passed or we're about to go to war, they just know a couple weeks in advance what to buy. Six months out. You know? Yeah. So, um, th and that's also another signal of what could come because if they're hedging with that when this wasn't normally the hedge it normally was tesla calls and nvidia calls and apple calls apple, and now yeah. they're going to defense now they're telling you hey this could be coming or i got a bug in my ear for what could be do we know what companies that they're actually invested in i haven't been able to find them yet I, trust me i've been hunting hopefully by next week i can find them but if not definitely at the show um in chicago october 22nd yeah. i will have them for you i feel like that's always the interesting part like we'll, we'll hear that they're investing in companies i remember when they would they were doing apple and they did disney um and when they were you know they had puts and they had calls on it we found out about it like six months after or four yeah. months after and it was like all right well, they already reaped the benefits they probably got in and out of these positions already paused uh and we're just reading about it uh yeah. so like I wonder if, if I know that they're trying to, you know, put laws in place that, you know, Congress and, and people uh, in political power can't trade or they shouldn't be allowed to. But mm -hmm. it'd be interesting if they could have them what they're actually doing since they are public figures. Uh, yeah. and they, you know, they have influence and they have advantages in having information that we don't as yep. a general public. If they could have like a live ticket of the things that, you know, some of the things that they're actually investing in. That would be great. Um, and for everyone who's wondering, they are playing in the rules since they reported. 
it is technically not inside of trading if you report it within a certain amount of time. Right. Um, but I will go to Quiver Quant, Senator of Stock Watch, or you can just Google Congress trades and there's a bunch of sites that'll tell you what they're actively in. Yeah. I haven't seen Pelosi uh, invest in anything yet, but if so, she is a market maker for me She's, that I will look at. Yeah. And, and she, I mean, I, I feel like her minimum investment is $500,000 every time she does it. Uh, anywhere between 500 to 2 million. And so we're, we're not, we're talking thousands and hundreds of thousands of shares of, of when she gets yeah. in, into a company, um, which is good to know, right? Like there, there's some, there might be a piece of legislation that gets passed. That's going to be beneficial for the investment that she's making mm -hmm. or it could be detrimental. And, and now she's making puts on that company, yeah. um, which is sort of, I mean, you talk about competitive advantage. That's a good one. That's a hell of a one and a half. <laughs> That is a hell of an advantage to have for sure. Also, it does tell you about position sizing um, for what her net worth is, how much she's risking on every trade, and also how long she stays in those trades. It's a good homework assignment that I think everybody should follow. Yeah. Yeah.